Hello everyone, my name is Henry Haight. Thank you for visiting my channel. I am a multidisciplinary artist and today's topic, today is, video is about um, a painting that I'm doing for this exhibition. Um, I always think that exhibitions or solo shows always have one or two pieces that are supposed to be the big finish um, within that, that virtually kind of encompass the running theme of something. And with my exhibition at Lauren Paul Projects under the Pleasure District, um, it's based on the Freudian eyed theory of the pleasure principle, which is the primal need for instant gratification, be it through food, sex, uh, libidinous uh, urges, um, sensations, bodily sensations, the, the, that primal, like hunter gatherer, immediate gratification of taking something. Um, is, is apparent in all of us, regardless of our uh, sexual identity, our genders, our class, we, we all have these things. And essentially the, 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 the topic came up to me because especially since we've all gone through a global pandemic, there seems to be this wave of talking about mental health and, you know, depression. Not to not to mention, you know, um, the topic of social media and suicides and and these things that we 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 now live in a society where we validate through likes, clicks, and and all that. Um, well, there are people who do that, and 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 seek that out. And the the strange thing about red light districts um, is that before social media, you could go there and be anonymous and essentially take on a different identity. Sex workers would take on different identities and virtually kind of have this veil of red light to hide any discrepancies or, um, you know, uh, human, you know, scars and scabs and all kinds of VD and uh, everything. And it made people look more, uh, more beautiful. Um, the the director Lauren Powell sent me an article, uh, I believe it was in the Los Angeles Times about this theory now that restaurants are starting to illuminate their restaurants through red light for the primal of fear, danger, lust, love, passion, intimacy, um, which I thought was very interesting because, you know, in different cultures, red has different meanings especially within china it's the imperial red you know russia is this grandiose you know color of authority we all know what stop means and and you know so the, the there's these things of like this heat of warning or passion valentine they, they, they all encompass this thing you know red lipstick and um i i i thought what did i want to say with a particular painting and th this one, as I was starting to cultivate the show um, through my experiences through red light districts um, globally and, you know, heartbreak and divorce and all those things, um, I wanted to put a narrative that, you know, what was funny was that just as the wane of the the pandemic, which is still here, people are still catching COVID, don't get me wrong, um, there seemed to be within the gay community this outbreak of monkeypox and a few of my friends suffered this and it virtually put a, a span in the works not only in how they approached men but virtually because it was something that physically took over their bodies unlike covid where you know um it I think for for gay men especially it, it really one in particular my friend from South Africa who just uh, he said that he he wanted to stop going to certain places just because of the three months that it took for him to recover and then virtually uh, it kind of scarred him and you know we've just come through this global pandemic millions of people have died and then all of a sudden you know i started to hear japanese with some friends and oh so so and so got this and so and so got this and you know we'd we had gone through this period of isolation and loss of human contact and without even realizing it, it affected my dog because my my dog in my tattoo shop was always love to have people you know around her and adore on her and dote on her and 
the lockdown took that away from her. And um, when I saw it happen, when she saw a bus for the first time, she just sat in the sidewalk and it was like, holy shit, it just, it's just not people. It, it affected animals too. And I cried because, you know, I just wanted to make my dog happy and I, I had no idea this, this you know, um, but I digress. Anyways, um, you know, we, we, we're coming out of this thing and, you know, we've had to get inoculated and vaccinated and all these things. And then all of a sudden, boom, this other thing happens. And I started to also just start to want to start dating again. And I had to think about, I'm, I'm vaccinated, double boosted or triple boosted and, and, and double boxed for monkey pox. Um, touch wood, haven't gotten it, but I don't want anyone to get it. But the, the, the thing was that it kind of left me with this urgency of like, there seems to be for certain people this detachment and then this need for wanting to get closer. So I decided to paint something, uh, a painting called The Ballad of Human Attachment. And in the painting, you will see uh, an angel or the duality of someone who with the extreme cautionary of, you know, a hazmat suit and, and, and riot gear. And, and, and also the, the riot gear and the hazmat type of thing is essentially uh, the primal urge of us, uh, that pleasure principle, but the cautionary and the innocence of the other party, the angel, wanting to, to succumb to that. Because I believe no matter your gender, your class, your sexual preference, whatever, you know, what you identify as, there is always going to be a duality. There is a masculine and a feminine, a good and an evil. And in between, there's a plethora of values that, you know, you kind of ride that wave. But... Um, for this especially for me because there was a part of me that wanted to that longs for that connection with a particular somebody you know going through divorce and I wish I don't wish divorce on anyone because it is it is painful it is it really it is a gut punch that you know it can take you years to recover for and I'm still recovering from it but um and no way am I mended from this, but I thought within this painting, I, I wanted to put my heart into it. And and I do feel that with this, this show in particular, I have a lot writing on my, uh, on, on this exhibition. And this piece, I, I really wanted to, to put my all into it. Um, gold features prominently in my work a lot. Um, uh, not because of <laughs> glamour or whatever, but, you know, uh, uh, growing up as a Catholic, um, religious art, orthodox art always has this gilded uh, method of adding gold to the, the, the artwork within the churches or, or the temples and, and, and everything to kind of give this higher elevation um, of godliness. But I also believe that, you know, the gold... In, in the self, that know the self-worth. Um, and good or bad, that's that's one of the things that I take I take from religious art that virtually kind of just elevates that a little higher. Um, but with the ballad of human attachment, I, I, I kind of struggled with it for a bit. You know, it was like trust the process, trust the process. And as you'll see, that essentially, you know, I, I started to go I, I had the running theme of the, the an angel and, and a minotaur riot gear hazmat kind of two, two one one is kind of open the other is fully guarded, um, and it's it's that struggle that we have within ourselves to try to come together to find a resolution to go forward and that's what I really wanted to do. Um, my last biggest commission for the NHS in in, in Nottingham. Uh, through Eyes Open also contain gold. And I took references from Gustav Klimt, you know, Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics and everything. So I always try to take certain elements of classic art and put it into a context for my work. And um, 
hopefully you'll understand and get to see my process within this and understand what I'm trying to do and how, how this painting came about. Because, you know, I thought, yeah, I get this with the garland and stuff. And then I was like, oh, no, I wasn't feeling it. And then, um, you know, the thing about when I'm trying to paint a relationship or put something... There's this theoretical mathematical equation, you know, we do the pluses and minuses within should we do this, should we not, and, and stuff like that. So I I started to strip away the, the back and, and then try to put these things to where we how do we problem solve our, our relationships and put like the circles and the squares and, and the di uh the triangles to kind of see if we those fit the certain pegs within um, our checklist of self and, and the others. I know it sounds really contrived to do that, but I think we do that in some ways and, and we try to rationalize it to say, okay, do we go forward or not? And so these these symbols are there for that. I took my tattoo needles and I virtually uh, start to damage the, the painting in a way to strip away the, the other layers to show what was underneath, um, which I, I, I ended up loving. Um, because I, I came up through tattooing, um, you know, tattooing is, is a very intimate thing, but I wanted to figure out how do, how can I incorporate this into my work? And, you know, a lot of the paintings I do of men, they tend to either my clients or the models I choose have been tattooed by me. Um, and rather than just getting pretty people or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But um, it, it's funny that I... I, I'm really happy and, and proud of this work. And um, the opening is in uh, Los Angeles, Hollywood, California at Lauren Powell Projects. September 1st is the opening. Uh, there's two openings, the first and the second. Uh, this, the second is to the general public. I will be there for the first, uh, for 10 days from the first through the 10th. I will be tattooing. Um, if you want to come and visit, I will be there, or you can contact the gallery about booking a tattoo appointment with me. Um, I would love to meet uh, any of you out there. Um, you know, I'd like to hear your feedback on, on the work because I will be turning the gallery space into a red light district. Um, and I will be showcasing 22 works. Um, four that are archive, archival from my body, of work and then the rest is all new work so there'll be acrylics and oils um this one in particular is an oil painting um which took me a long time over the course of days and weeks um i spent virtually i'd say two and a half months honestly on, on this piece to where i was like okay okay great um so with that um i hope you enjoy it um, make sure to hit the a notification button uh, so you can get up, uh, be informed of all of my updates. Hit the like and subscribe button because that would help me out with the algorithm and, you know, get a secondary hustle on this. Um, you know, it is getting harder and harder for artists to virtually make a living just on their art. And I've been fortunate enough that, you know, the, the bracket where I'm in that I can make some money, but you know, right now it is dire um, within the art market because the economy is, uh, though people are saying boomy, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, I'll shut up. So um, thank you for coming and let me know what you think of the painting. So again, I give you the ballad of human attachment. Take it easy guys, take care. See you soon.
Well, someone told me you were tiny, haven't you? Yeah, I, I started smoking, I hate smoking, 15, I actually bust my finger, couldn't do any goalkeeping and uh, hang around with the wrong crowd, started smoking. Where? What, where, what, what, what school? What school? What school? What school? Yeah. No, I, was, uh, I was a smoker for 15 years. Really? And then in 2000, just decided to give up. You used to, you and your brother, you used to have a little pop, didn't you? Oh, no, I think as, as a kid, I think everyone tries it. Tell the story, mate, tell the story. It's just a bit of fun. I know, I used to, me and my brother, we had a little gang ran out of the way, and I was probably a little bit younger than you, probably, you know, and I was probably, and uh, my brother used to go in the shop, and all the 20 Watmans, what well, do you remember? And, and the woman would say, who's this for? I was like, well, my mum. But my mum never went in this shop, ever. So it was a pure, you know, we had parties every week. So it was all over there, a little camp, all the kids were over there, like puff and whatever. So all of a sudden, my mum has gone into the shop, which we didn't know, and the lady behind the counter said, Do you want your normal Tony Watman? This is <laughs> So I, 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 I've never spoke in my life. So we're all, oh, your, your, your boys come in every week. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's life, isn't it? I mean, but Jamie, we talked about the arcade earlier, uh, before we started the show, didn't we? We got an arcade. And back in the day, video games. Yeah. Were you addicted then? Addicted? No, no, I'm, I'm not addicted to anything. No? I'm just obsessed. There's there there a fun. fundamental difference. Yeah, I, yeah, I what stopped. sort of games did you play <coughs> back in the day? Uh, so one PlayStation? There was one game, uh, Final Fantasy VII, which was on PlayStation 2. Did you ever think it affected your concentration? Or did you do, what time did you go to bed at night, sort of thing? Say oh, you no, 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 no. Always during the week. I mean, it, 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 and again, it's sort of all linked in with, like, the sort of drinking culture and whatever. When, uh, I, I remember I was going through a bad patch, yeah. and I had a friend who I thought was a friend in the media, and he wanted to do an interview with me, and we were having this chat, and I said to him, you know what, uh, my friend Colin Jackson, Olympic, um, yeah. silver oh, observer, yeah. yeah. We were chatting about games once. He wasn't allowed to play video games on the day of the meet because his coach said it takes away your nervous energy. <coughs> and I 